Hello, fellow traders. Tis I, the Rumpled One, coming to you on Wednesday, January the 5th. The year is 2022. Let's talk trading. Trading is a skill, part three. Uh, just one thing. Somebody wanted to know if I had a business email. Um, this is the email um, that you can use if you want to contact me via email, and you can find me on Facebook right there. So, as always, these videos are for educational purposes only. Your results may differ from mine. Okay, we've been talking about trading as a skill. Now, I think I mentioned in the first video that when you want to get better at something, you have to practice. So, you have to identify exactly what it is you want to get better at. So in trading, people say, well, I want to get better at making money, but mm, that's kind of nebulous when you think about it. So for example, if you have a method or you find a method, then what is it you have to get better at? Well, you've already got the method, so that work's been done. So all you have to do is get better at executing the method. In other words, if you're doing a horizontal line trade, and for some strange reason, your entries are off, you're either hesitating or you're, or you're uh, you know, jumping the gun, then what you need to get better at is waiting for that entry to appear for your trigger to, to, to go off and then you execute in that moment and that's what you practice doing as you're trading so the thing is you have to have some skin in the game if you have a problem drop down just trade a dime a pip you know a micro lot one micro lot and for the goal of just making sure your entries are happening when you want them to. Now, of course, sometimes the broker might slip you or something. You know, that's to be expected. But for the most part, you know if you're clicking when you should be clicking or if you're jumping the gun, you know, maybe by a few seconds or you're hesitating maybe by a few seconds or a minute or something. Um, that's what you work on. The next part, you know, now we move, you know, down a level and we're going to look at your money management and risk management. Well, this is something that's really simple. You decide way ahead of time how much you're willing to lose per trade. And then you, if you're going to adjust your stop loss based on your method, it says, well, if, you know, one time you put the stop, maybe it's seven pips away. The next time it's 11 pips away. Well, then you're going to need something and you're going to have to recalculate your position size. So you never lose more than you're willing to lose on any one trade. And so what you practice there is, is calculating that as quickly as possible. Maybe you've got an indicator that does that in real time. Tells you if you were to enter now what your stop loss would be based, what your position size would be based on where you set the stop loss. <clears throat> so that's one thing. Or if you do it the other way, if you know you're always going to trade, say, one, one mini lot, and you're going to risk no more than, uh, let's say, $15 per trade, then your stop loss is always $15 from your entry. And so when you hit enter, you can immediately enter your stop loss as soon as you put the trade on or you can have an indicator an ea that runs in the background and sues as as soon as it sees a trade that doesn't have a stop loss it goes in and automatically puts the stop loss in for you so right there you can use some automation to help you with your risk management money management the same thing if your um method says well you need to take profit at this level then you go ahead and you set your tp 
as soon as you enter the trade. So basically, if you set your stop loss and TP as soon as you enter the trade, it's a hands-off deal. You just sit and wait and, and, and watch and see what the market does. On the other hand, if you're more dynamic, if you're more, you know, going for the, the scalps, maybe two or three pips, as soon as you see that, um, you can either, once again, you could set up TP at two or three pips, and then as soon as it happens, the market will take you out, or you have your hand, you know, over the uh, close button, and you can take it out that way, and you just have to practice. And if for some reason you find yourself always um, being a, on the slow side, you know, you can use automation to help you. So that's the next thing. And finally, you know, we just talked about the money management, but then finally, the brain management. How do you practice good brain management? So if you have fear of losing out or fear of missing out, you just have to tell yourself that you, you're not going to engage in those thoughts. You're not going to think, well, if I don't take this trade, it could rock it. It's like it could always rock it. You, you're just going to have to talk yourself out of that nonsense. Same thing uh, with the, with the uh, regrets. You know, you're just going to have to talk yourself out of them. And hopefully, after you've talked yourself out of them enough, you won't talk yourself into them in the first place. You know, maybe what you do is you get in a trade, you exit the trade, whether it's profit or loss, then you get up, you walk away, you know, get a cup of coffee, cup of tea, you know, go for a walk, do a couple of push-ups or pull-ups or sit-ups, just kind of take your mind off of it and then come back with a fresh mind and then you don't even really worry about what happened next. And then that way you won't experience that pain that you're doing to yourself. So I hope that, you know, maybe I've just said something that'll help you in your practice of trading. So let's go to the charts. Monthly, seven pips off the monthly high at the moment, 126 off the low and 31 above the open. Price has, has been moving up and you can see it broke above the previous month's high. Weekly, pretty much the same deal. Um, we broke a Above the previous week's high, which was also the previous month's high. This was a uh, a good day to be trading the opening range for the uh, week, month, and year. The breakout right now it, that was at one thirty five thirty three. We're twenty two pips above that, nine off the uh, high. So there was an opportunity to make about thirty pips had you. Uh, taking that trade and one of the hints that was given was you can see it broke below the yearly open and turned around and went above it again you know price has to range away from the yearly open it just has to so when we're you know this close in the year and we're that close to that yearly open you take that crossover trade Because for the month, let's, let's just take a quick look here. For the month, we've got 134 pip range, it looks like. But we know the range is usually around, what, 300 or more pips. So this price has to move away from that yearly open. And as you can see here, we're 37 pips away from those opens. Inside bar break on that uh, weekly inside bar from seven weeks ago happened yesterday. And we stayed above it, but we're still in that monthly inside bar that occurred three months ago. Still more inside bar action. And by the way, there was a trader that sent an email was asking about inside bar indicators. Uh, these here are in the mother load. Uh, the one over here, this is the dashboard that is... Um, TRO 2017 dashboard that sets up and I've been sending this out with all the donationals since 2017 um, 
because rather than keep changing the indicator name and then you might have to change you know 10 or more templates i just kept it the same so that's what i'm probably going to do with a few other indicators moving forward that way if you have them and i do an upgrade and rather than you having to change your templates you can still use the same indicator because if you have a lot of templates it can be a real pain trust me i know because i have lots of templates because i develop all this stuff okay the range today only one pair over 100 pips we do have fomc reporting that's going to come out in about three hours or so so maybe these ranges will uh increase for that buy zone once again it was all buy no sell trigger here uh rat zone the range is too low so no real rat zone trades pivot it says near the r1 short well we're just now approaching r1 for the first time at the pivot the bias is long we haven't taken out the pivot so we've got a missed pivot so far today or this so far uh yeah today and then for the week we took out the week and for the month we missed that monthly pivot by uh, 19 pips in and out of the upper wick zone that that daily upper wick zone from the previous day as you can see here in and out back in and out and then back in and out of the up the upper and once again closing you know outside of of a wick zone 79 percent of the time price doesn't like staying in the wick zones and looking at the scalper here a while ago there was a nice uh higher low scalp to the south side and produced a two ball down here which then turned into a uh, scalp to the upside so some nice pips to be picked up there now possibly if you took this trade here got your fingers burned because it's going the other way and the thing is you definitely you had an, enough pushes to uh take that trade so that really wasn't the uh, problem per se it's just that's just the way the market moves sometimes and you would have been going against the uh, h1 candle color in the last what 10 to 15 minutes of the uh, move here so you know anything could happen maybe you haven't hit your stop loss yet or it's only moved what three pips against you so there's still opportunities to uh, pick up pips on that short if price keeps moving in your direction. Walmart trade. Uh, something looks kind of funky here for some strange reason. Let me uh, switch the time frames back and forth to refresh the chart. There we go. Uh, this hour long was indicated at 50 last hour long was indicated at 50 both of those trades were worth at least 10 pips it looks like and the hour before same thing and you also had opportunity to go short so simple trade Walmart trade I know some of you guys are having having a hard time with it um, not sure uh, maybe it's uh, one of the things you're just going to have to practice if you're trading this. Make sure you're trading the pound dollar um, or you make sure that you're trading uh, whatever you're trading during that time. The ranges are, you know, at least um, somewhere in the high teens or, or, or 20 or more. That That's important for this trade. Um, ATR zone, nowhere near it. And... Uh, once again, just showing where we are against the yearly open. So, fellow traders, um, I hope that helps you somewhat in your trading. Practice. So whenever you're trading, think of it as practice and work on what needs to be worked on. 
And only you know what you need to do because it's not what you trade, it's how you trade it. So go out there and drain the banks. This is the rumpled one over and out.